our guitar restoration uh, was such a success. This Martin came in to me from the Deep South. It had uh, been fitted with an oversized bridge and a gigantic bridge pad inside the guitar, which was kind of crazy. It was a big piece of cherry. I uh, ended up putting in a smaller piece of maple. Yeah, I rode all over it. But the new bridge turned out great. I rerouted the slot for good intonation. It also had a big binding problem in a hole in the bottom of the guitar, kind of on the top and on the side. Had some of the purfling missing and the binding. I had to route new channels for that and then color it in so that it looked old and patch in the wood and spray a little lacquer. I will have to say that uh, this guitar was coated in polyurethane including the entire fretboard. Um, so, yeah, I used a little shellac here and there and some lacquer and stuff, but to my defense, it started off with a coating of polyurethane and a really bad fret job and a back bowed neck. Here's a look at that piece of cherry that was inside the guitar that was covering the, uh, the old chewed up bridge plate. It got pretty chewed up over the years also. The bridge was made of white oak wood, which is pretty unusual for um, in guitar making for someone to use white oak. Uh, I've never really seen any kind of oak in a guitar uh, that I can remember anyways. So that was interesting. Um, it was held on by glue and wood screws, good old fashioned ones from the Ace Hardware store. Um, the frets, I got them out. They seemed to have been forced in there with such force. They weren't really held in very good on the ends either, and it was cutting the guy's hand up. Um, it's like they were hammered in right in the center of the fretboard really hard, and they were completely straight. Um, they didn't have the radius that the fretboard should have. So I was thinking about putting those back in after I sanded off the polyurethane, but I decided against it because I thought the tangs were a little too fat, and there was a horrible back bow on the neck. Ended up refretting it with um, some fret wire that had a smaller tang. Um, I also had to sand off a good deal of the wood on the rosewood fretboard to um, get rid of a back bow. And I know the Martin purists are going to say you can't do that, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. You know, when the belly tool rocks back and forth, it's time to give it a belly treatment. Flatten her down. Right here we have the TJ Thompson belly reducer in the works, in action. You can look down inside. Oh yeah, there's my little cleat. Last night I used the TJ Thompson belly reducer worked great. This is kind of what the saddle looked like it was doing before last night. It was kind of teeter tottering like that. Anyways, uh, clamp this in place overnight, and what we have is flat, dead flat. Very nice. And then with the Stumac Saddlematic, I was able to decide that the front edge of the saddle is going to fall pretty close to the front edge of the bridge, even with the bridge pushed right to the very front line of where that old bridge was. So it's definitely going to go to the front, and it's uh, these holes are all off center and they're chewed up like hell. So I think my best bet is to plug them shift the saddle to the treble side about a 32nd of an inch. 
And also, the other thing I found out was that the total thickness of the top and the soundboard together is 5 millimeters, which is a little too thin for my liking. And this, this is actually very close to the size of the bridge plate. The bridge plate is exactly this size right here. So I'm going to make a, a piece of plain sawn maple, probably two millimeter or two and a half, three millimeter thick, and glue it onto the inside. And I'll have a nice, clean, flat, perfectly smooth, fresh looking bridge plate. Uh, it's, you know, if you look inside the guitar, it'll look real nice anyways. But it'll give my the ball ends of the string something really nice and clean to rest against. And it'll give the, uh, the entire top a little more thickness, which it needs. It's going to sound real good, too. Now I've got to figure out how to add in a little bit of color. I took Vintage Amber and Kalamazoo Mahogany, which is a brown shade. And it's a uh, color tone liquid stain. And I just mixed it into some shellac. I grabbed a uh, just a natural brush, hair natural hair brush, not a synthetic hair, and um, I didn't you know, made sure it wasn't too wet either. I think I explained before that it's, or I'll explain in a minute here that it's. Um, I put a little sanding sealer on the raw spruce so that it wouldn't uh, soak up the stain unevenly. I just want to do this in layers with a shade slightly lighter than the surrounding polyurethane. The surrounding finish is all polyurethane. Whatever the original lacquer was on this guitar is long gone. They sanded it down uh, quite aggressively. They did a good job. It looked fine. But it even this low-tech tape, that white tape that's on there right now, when I peeled that off, quite a bit of the urethane came off with it. So it, it wasn't adhered to the spruce very well. So I had to be real gentle with uh, putting any tape around the area. Several coats of shellac with the uh, color tone stain, and then several coats of uh, lacquer on top of that with a little amber stain and I finally got it to match little by little it took several days I'll mention that also uh, once I had the color just about right I put the bridge back down over the footprint and sc scored a line or scribed a line around the bridge and then scraped off any little bit of finish around the edges so that um, it wouldn't uh, impede the glue from sticking. So here's where I'm at with this whole repair and this is about mainly not how to replace a bridge or take a bridge off and you know refit it and everything. This is about repairing the finish around an old oversized bridge. So what I did is I sanded it down a little bit with the 400 grit, well 320, 400, and then I put, brushed on a little sanding sealer so that the stain wouldn't, you know, really penetrate into the spruce too much and leave it blotchy. So sanding sealer, and then I started brushing on uh, satin nitro which is uh, thinned. Now this is just Minwax brushing lacquer that I thinned down with about 60% lacquer, 40% thinner and I added in like a drop or two of the uh, vintage amber color tone liquid stain. And I just went around a really light coats. So I, I would dip the brush in about halfway and then on a paper towel just kind of take the excess off the brush you know I would I would dip it in take a little excess off and then a real thin brush and this is a natural fiber brush this is not synthetic this is like horsehair 
which uh, leaves less lines. So slowly I brush it in on the raw wood and I did multiple coats, maybe six or seven, until I got to the point where I thought this looks like it uh, matches the, the surrounding. So once I peel this up and everything, I'll, I'll uh, do the rest of the bridge uh, work, which is kind of scribing. But first, I give it like three or four days, and then I'm going to uh, wet sand and polish as needed. Right now, it doesn't even look like I need to. It's just looking pretty good. Got her all sanded down, stripped off. Sanded. It's a nice fretboard. Hell, has no dents in it. Crisp and clean, like the day she rolled off the line. Can't believe that. And that. There's the bridge glue up. I don't know if we can see down in there. See the colors? Oh, here we go. We'll turn off that overhead lights. And we'll just look at the lights on the inside. Yeah. It's like a Christmas tree. brand new uh, four ply purfling is in and the tortoise binding is on. I got it trimmed and sanded. That's my patch. But uh, right now I'm making the brand new white and black purfling look yellowed or aged and so the way I'm going to do that is by taking a little bit of acetone and about three drops of uh, vintage amber stain and just brushing it on the edge little bit at a time. It makes the uh, the white look more of a like a yellow vintage amber. Actually that that's that's my seam right there. That's where the new binding meets the old right here and because I scraped over the entire area I made the old binding turn white again. Actually See a little spot where I scraped the wood. Way right there. I shouldn't get too much acetone on this. But um, right here I'm coming to the end of the area that I need to age. Then I'm going to spray vintage amber lacquer over the whole area and just continue to make it look aged and old. So that about does it. That should do it. this works out for me, I hope uh, it helps someone else. This is the unbleached bone.
pretty close. Let me scrape it a little bit. Use my little convex shaped file. Cleaned it off every once in a while. And give it a little scrape. That's good enough for my tolerances, I'd say. This guitar is real. It's really got some nice tone to it. Light as a feather. Alright. So that's what I did. I put the tape here and I used a file and a scraper and then um, I pulled the whole thing out, put it in the nut vise and did a little more shaping and polishing with up to 800 grit on the sandpaper and that's it. Get a little closer in you can maybe see that it's compensated somewhat. It um, This one's all the way forward. This one's all the way back. These two are all the way forward. This one's right about in the middle and this one's all the way back. That's kind of how they come from the factory these days. Brand new from Martin. So. Uh, that's what I did there. Now this is a 1939, which makes it, I don't know, is that 90 years old? Wow, a 90 year old guitar with a brand new Stumac Ebony pre-war belly bridge. And it really sounds fantastic. Lots of sustain. Real resonant and super lightweight. Lightest guitar, one of the lightest guitars I've ever felt. Uh, I've, I've worked on a couple of these pre war ones and they're always pretty light. So, this one also had the humongous piece, total gouge taken out right there. Um, when it came to me, it, the uh, purfling was gone and the, the um, tortoise binding was missing up to a certain extent. You can see where I pieced it together. The, the, the purfling patch, it's at a 45 degree angle right there. It comes around all the way to right here. And then the binding, still got bone dust all over the place. Actually, I think it had a previous repair. That This binding was already there. My binding started right here. It's a little darker. That's my binding, my new binding right there, and it comes all the way down to the very end. No, it wasn't a perfect match. It was a little darker. Cigarette burn. You gotta leave a couple battle scars, you know. It makes it cool. 